Hi mates, and at long last it is time again to say welcome back to my World of Tanks channel. I'm Antonov too, and yeah, to basically make up for me not uploading a video for three weeks now, I'm really sorry about that, I'm going to have a real treat lined up for you guys today, because we'll be looking at the Leopard 1, my tier 10 medium tank, it's a German tank, and uh, yeah, I really love this tank, this was my second tier 10 I ever unlocked. It is quite a controversial machine because it can be really strong but also can be really weak and it is arguably one of the most difficult tanks to drive properly in the entire game. So hopefully in this review and guide or tutorial to this tank I will explain to you how to perform well with this vehicle and also give you the pros and cons and then afterwards you decide whether it's worthwhile grinding this vehicle out. So basically if you want to unlock the Leopard 1 you've got two ways to get there either through light tanks or medium tanks and in all honesty both of these lines are quite a pain to grind out. The German light tanks up to tier 7 aren't very good. The Lux is fun but the Leopard and the VK and the Aufklärungspanther are all quite sluggish and big for light tanks so being effective in them is somewhat difficult. The same thing kind of goes for the medium tanks. For example the tier 7 is a real pain uh, it has got really bad penetration, not very good armor, and just is quite mediocre all in all. The Indian Panzer was alright, I guess. The Leopard prototype, however, is not really a very good machine, as the rate of fire on the gun and armor are quite disappointing. And then, finally, at tier 10, you get to the Leopard, which is a real breath of fresh air. This is what you've been working for all the time, and... It is a great tank. When this tank first was introduced in patch 8.5, I played it on the test server and I straight away decided I want to get myself one of these. I basically rushed for research on that entire line and unlocked the Leopard 1. This tank was actually a result of a joint development program by France, Italy and Germany. These three countries decided to develop a kind of more modern tank in the 1950s. However, the program failed because the Germans didn't want to use the gun the French suggested. So they just went on to develop their own tank, the Leopard 1, and the French developed the AMX 30, which we can see here. So because both these tanks originated from the same development project and the same kind of prototypes, they are kind of similar. And that's why when we look at the stats, we will be comparing these two tanks. However, we will not only be comparing the Leopard 1 to the AMX 30B, but also to the E50M, because this is the German medium tank, obviously, at tier 10, and it has kind of somewhat similar characteristics, especially uh, when we look at the guns, so they are also in kind of more or less direct competition. Hit point wise, the differences are very marginal, however, the E50M beats the Leopard 1, and the AMX 30B by 50 and 100 HP. However, 1950 is still solid for a tier 10 medium tank. Basically, that's average health. The signal range is standard at 750. It beats the E50M, that only gets 720, but that's not that important really. However, the speed limit is five kilometers higher, which is quite nice. Also, this tank can reach its top speed easily, this is the joint fastest tier 10 tank in the game, on par with the AMX 30B and the Batshot 25T. Traverse speed is quite good too at 23 degrees. It weighs 40 tons, which is not that light really. Obviously the E50M, which is renowned for its high weight, is heavier, but still 40 tons is quite decent and many people think that they can easily ram the Leopard 1 because, you know, it's kind of not got much armor and so on, so they think it will be light, but it actually isn't, so you have to be careful. 40 tons is more or less kind of upper average even for a medium tank at T10. This is where we kind of come to a bit of a letdown because the armor of this tank is, well, everything but overwhelming really. It, uh has got 70 millimeters of frontal hull armor, which is all right, I guess. However, if we take a quick look at uh, the tank in the garage, we can see that 
the angle, it is kind of angled, but it's not like insanely well angled. So really at tier 10 and the games you'll be getting in, almost anything will penetrate that. 35 millimeters of side armor and 25 at the rear. At the turret front, we only get 52, 60 at the sides, 60 at the rear. And uh, although you might think the Leopard 1 gets a beefy gun mantlet, really nothing will bounce off, even off the front of the turret. This tank is ridiculously squishy and easy to penetrate. Even the AMX-30B has got it beaten in armour. It's got slightly better frontal hull armour and sides and rear are kind of similar to the Leopard 1. However, the turret front is a lot more sturdy. Sides and rear for turret, however, are weaker. Now, the important thing, although the differences in the raw armour thickness might not seem that significant, actually the angling on the AMX-30B's armour is quite a bit better than that of the Leopard 1. So although obviously like the AMX 40B it hasn't got a very good survivability in battles either, it is better than the Leopard 1 by quite a bit actually. However the E50M has got them both beaten by far in armour. This is the main strong suit of the E50M. Gets 150 millimeters of frontal hull armor. If we look at the tank's hull, we can also see that it's angled quite nicely. Everything will basically bounce from the upper glacius. The lower glacius is a bit of a weak spot, but 80 millimeters of side and rear armor are still quite nice and will even allow this tank to pull off some side scraping in some situations. The turret front sits at 185 millimeters. However, unfortunately for the E50M, it's quite rigid and flat, so most shots will penetrate that if they miss the gun mounted. However, the gun mounted is uh, basically unpenetrable. 80 millimeters of side and rear armor on the turret as well. So um, yeah, that is just the best thing about the E50M really. Many heavy tanks actually look with envy at the E50M's protection. It is really good and no comparison to the Leopard 1 or the AMX 40B really. So although you cannot fire HE ammunition at the Leopard 1, you have to always have in the back of your mind that you cannot take punishment with this vehicle. Everything that you can meet, even scout tanks, will penetrate you from every angle and you have to adjust your playstyle according to that. The power to weight ratio is really outstanding on the Leopard 1 at 20.75 which is better than the AMX 30B and the E50M even though the difference is not that great here either. Still it will allow the Leopard 1 to accelerate very well, keep that top speed, go up hills quite easily and turn corners very well. Speaking of turning corners, 45 degrees per second reverse speed is superb. 10 degrees better than the E50M, that is quite a big difference. And also it's got six degrees over the AMX 40B, which is very nice. The terrain resistance is also great on the Leopard 1 at 0 0.8, 0 0.9 and 1.8. You have to keep in mind here that a lower number actually is better for terrain resistance. You can see that the E50M will be quite sluggish, uh, especially on hard terrain. Same thing kind of goes for the AMX 30B, although its ground resistance stats are quite solid actually, the Leopard 1 has just got amazing ground resistance and this is also one of the strong suits of this tank. The chance of fire is very low on all of these tanks, however the uh, Leopard 1 and AMX 30B have got a slightly lower chance of fire. This is because they've used diesel engines rather than uh, benzene or gasoline, so the chance of fire is lower. Unfortunately, however, this means that you cannot use octane gasoline uh, 105 or 110 on these tanks to improve your maneuverability as a consumable. Moving on to the turret stats, the view range is excellent. 410 is above average at tier 10 and will allow you to pull off some great spotting with this vehicle. Combined with its good top speed and maneuverability, in some situations you can even use this vehicle as a scout, although it's not its primary role and you shouldn't really do this unless you absolutely have to because its rather large size means that you will still get hit quite often. Turret traverse speed is very good also at 36 degrees per second, however uh, it is better on the AMX 40B. Still it really outclasses the E50M with 30 degrees per second. Moving on to the gun, 
all three of these tanks have got really similar 105mm guns, all three of them doing 398 hit points of damage, which is quite a lot. All three of them have got outstanding penetration. The E50M, however, has got the best out of the lot with 270mm. The Leopard 1 is quite close to that at 268mm, and both of these German tanks kind of leave the mx 30 b behind a bit, sitting at 260mm only. A Leopard 1 also gets to fire HE ammunition with 53mm of penetration. It is important to point out here that the HE ammunition on the E50M is actually quite a bit more effective than on both the other tier 10 mediums because it gets more damage and actually also quite a bit more penetration. Another thing that is important to point out here is that, as with all tier 10 mediums except for the Chinese one, these tanks use APCR ammunition as their standard rounds, meaning that uh, the shell travel time, the shell velocity will be really high, so you will have to kind of adjust your aim when you're coming from tanks firing AP shells, you will not have to lead your shots all that much, uh, making sniping really easy in this vehicle, even against moving targets. However, it gets less armor normalization at only 3 degrees against sloped armor. So that's a bit of a drawback. Then, as premium ammo, all three of these tanks get heat ammo. Heat uh, has got really high base penetration, however, it doesn't get any normalization, and you have to be really careful when firing at spaced armor with heat ammo because it doesn't penetrate very well. So, for example, firing at a mouse's side skirts, you should be actually better advised to use your standard ammo rather than the heat ammo. Here again, we can see the amazing shell velocity, although it actually is slightly better even when using the French gun. The DPM is actually really good on the Leopard 1, considering that the rest of the, start, the gun stats are that good too. Although it hasn't got the best DPM of all tier 10 tanks, 2700 is still quite nice and has got the MX 30B and especially the uh, E50M beaten by far. The rate of fire also is the best out of the three, 6.9, still not being the best rate of fire at tier 10, because, for example, the Russian tanks get better rate of fire, and I believe the M48 pattern does too. Still, the reload time is quite nice on this tank at 8.7 seconds. Now we come to the real sweet spot, in my opinion, for this tank, and that is its accuracy and aim time. At 0.3 meters, this tank's got the joint most accurate gun in the game, making it a ridiculously strong sniper. However, both of the other tanks also get 0.3 meters shot dispersion, so all of these tanks are really accurate. But the Leopard 1 has got the best aiming time, beating the other two at 0.2 seconds, which is actually somewhat significant and will allow this tank to pull off some clutch shots if you just aim even for a split second. The elevation arc is actually better on the Leopard 1 than on both the other tanks, having 9 degrees of gun depression rather than 8, and uh, 20 degrees of elevation is fairly standard. It also packs 60 rounds of ammunition, so uh, running out of uh, shells is actually not a realistic scenario in this vehicle. Yeah, that was all. Uh, I'm sorry that this took kind of long, but I really wanted to go over these stats in detail to give you a in-depth understanding of the Leopard 1's basic characteristics, so that we can now move on to discussing how you have to play to get the most out of this tank's stats. So, to sum up this tank, it is really fast, one of the fastest and most mobile tanks in the game, is deadly accurate, actually it also has got quite a good camo rating, especially considering that it's, uh, well, not the smallest tank in the game. It's got acceptable DPM and an outstanding view range, unfortunately the armour is really weak, and also one thing that uh, is worth pointing out is that module damage is a real problem with this tank, especially the ammo rack. Luckily, the ammo rack cannot be damaged anymore by shots going through the lower glaciers, which was a huge problem on this tank's predecessor, the Leopard prototype. But still, the ammo rack gets taken out very often, if that is a huge problem. Also, the turret ring is damaged quite often, and just generally module damage, except for engine fires. Engine fires are quite rare in this vehicle. But, um, yeah, a repair pack is absolutely mandatory. Another drawback is that, although the accuracy is really good, the shot dispersion while on the move is quite large. So, uh, taking shots while driving or rotating the turret can be difficult. 
So, yeah, what does that mean for the playstyle of this tank? How, how do you want to get the most out of what this tank offers? Well, basically there are two playstyle philosophies to the Leopard one. The first one being a sniping scout. And the way that works is you uh, use your excellent speed to get into an advantageous position. And for example, thinking about the hill on, say, Prokhorovka or also the hill on Himmelsdorf or places like that on the map, just where you can have a good commanding view of the surrounding area that is just important for your team to hold. Then you look for concealment on that location, for example, bushes or even hardcover and prepare yourself to scout for enemies coming your way. Then, when you scout them, you reverse. The reason why you have to reverse is because when you fire your gun, all bushes in the 15 meter radius of you become transparent. So they do not offer any camouflage anymore. So what you do is you uh, reverse for 15 meters. You can tell when you are 15 meters away from the bush because it will stop being transparent and will become actual foliage so uh, when that happens you fire your gun at the target then you drive forwards again and continue spotting basically and you can do that for quite some time in this tank the leopard one is an excellent sniper the gun is just very very well suited for the job however in my opinion that is a bit of a waste of this tank's potential because it is so fast and uh, its outplay potential is quite big, actually. So the other role you can have is that of a kind of a roaming, brawling tank. Although that is very risky, it can also be really rewarding because with your good speed, you'll be able to evade quite a lot of shots and your good DPM and yeah, basically excellent maneuverability and turret reverse speed will allow you to actually fight quite effectively in close quarters as well. Please don't misunderstand me here though and go toe to toe with tier 10 heavy tanks or anything. The Leopard one isn't designed for that, but you should kind of try to flank around your enemy's sides and rear and engage them from behind, for example. Uh, just look for openings in the enemy lines and try to capitalize on their mistakes. So you might be asking yourself, well, what playstyle do I recommend? Which one is the most effective? And that kind of depends a lot on your team composition, on the map, and just the general situation. But the way I usually play my Leopard 1 is a kind of a hybrid of both tactics. For, let's say, the first 3 to 5 minutes of the game, I will take the first tactic, which is sniping. I will get into a good position, dig in, and take long-range shots at enemies that come into my field of vision. Also, while getting some good spots off for my team, and basically softening up the enemy lines. Then, uh, once I see an opening in the enemy defences, I will just take my opportunity, rush through, flank round, and take rear and flanking shots at my enemies and that's the way I, I use the leopard and I've also got quite a bit of gameplay coming up in just a few minutes that will showcase just that playstyle. So what crew skills and equipment should you get to maximize the leopard one's efficiency? Well for the commander sixth sense is crucial you absolutely definitely need sixth sense. Also, Brothers and Arms is a decent crew skill on the Leopard 1 and I would definitely recommend getting it. However, not the first set of skills because you just absolutely need the Sixth Sense on your commander, first of all. That's so, so important on the Leopard 1. Just because it's really important that you know you have been spotted because once you have been, everybody will start opening fire at you because they think, oh look, there's a Leopard 1, he hasn't got any armor, let's just kill him because he's also quite a big threat. So, uh, because you're kind of a glass cannon, you will be focused down quite heavily. So, Sixth Sense is really important. The next choice of crew skills kind of depends on, again, which playstyle you prefer. If you prefer sniping or kind of spotting, then camouflage is a must-have on your entire crew. Camouflage is really good. If, however, you like being more active and actually influencing the outcome of a battle in the front line, then you should go for repairs where I got camouflage. I personally, although I actually like roaming and uh, outflanking my enemies, so really the logical choice for me would have been 
uh, repairs you might think. I still uh, sprung for camouflage just because I feel that it gives me quite a bit of an edge in the early stages of the game when I am sniping and not being detected is just so good on this tank. So that's why I went with camouflage however next set of skills will definitely be repairs on the entire crew because basically being detracted in this tank is a real nightmare because you'll just get shot to bits. So the way I do it is for first set of skills get six cents, then camouflage or repairs on your gun and driver depending on what you prefer and definitely save storage on your loader. That is really important because of the ammo rack problem I told you about. I literally had games where I took a shot, my ammo rack got damaged, I repaired it and exactly the next shot that penetrated me damaged my ammo rack again and that's not even a kind of a rare scenario but happens quite often. Then as a second set of skills, just get Brothers and Arms on the entire crew, it is really effective. Then third set, get repairs or camouflage depending on what you went for in your first set of skills for the commander. Um, snapshot and smooth ride are quite good for your gun and driver and then also again camouflage or repairs for your loader. Other crew skills that would be decent would probably be situational awareness and recon for your commander as view range is also quite a good start and recon will just allow you to really benefit of that great view range that you have. Then also actually jack of all trades would be decent on the commander because just this tank is quite vulnerable to critical hits. Next up we've got equipment and there are again two equipment layouts that you can go with depending on what tactic you prefer. So basically if you want to be a flanker you should go for the vertical stabilizer, the tank gun rammer and improved vents. Just a very basic setup. But if you want to be a sniper then depending on what you prefer if you feel like you need the vents or the stabilizer more you should either go for vertical stabilizer, coated optics and tank on rammer or vents, coated optics and tank on rammer, depending on just whether you prefer vents or stabilizer. So what I would recommend is just before you buy your equipment, just have a few games of the Leopard 1, determine what kind of playstyle you prefer and then buy your equipment and get your crew skills accordingly. And my ammo loadout is 49, 3 and 8. I've only got three heat shells because I hardly ever need them because the base penetration on the APCR shells is just so good and I personally don't even really like heat that much because it's just very risky using it because of its uh, space armor penetration characteristics and bad normalization. Then I actually only used to have five AG shells but I changed that to eight just lately because of introduction of very lightly armored tanks like the Waffentrager E100 or the new French tanks and I just feel that HE is becoming more important on these medium tanks just to maximize your DPM. For equipment I went with a small first aid kit, a repair kit and automatic fire extinguisher just very basic. As I already said you unfortunately cannot buy octane gasoline because this tank doesn't run on gasoline but on diesel. So, um, yeah, I've been waffling on for ages now. I hope you didn't get completely bored, but the upside is that I've got some fantastic gameplay lined up for you guys, so stay tuned, and I'll see you on the battlefield in a second. So, our first game today is on Prokhorovka, and it's an encounter battle. I am going to head out to this little island here to uh, basically try to get some shots off up here at this, on this ridge line. So, um, yeah, quite a few tanks coming along with me, even uh, a few vehicles that I wouldn't usually expect to come here, for example, an E75 or a WZ-1-4. These are usually frontline vehicles, so I don't quite understand why they are coming here, but, you know, uh, I won't complain about some extra backup, so. As you can see, uh, and that is quite good for us actually, but this AMX-50B is the only person who is going up there. Now that means that the enemies will quite probably, or hopefully, push uh, down here quite quickly, which will allow me to get sniping shots at them from my hiding spot behind this bush. However, no enemies pop up just yet, and I see quite a few enemy vehicles being spotted over here. 
so I decide to relocate up onto this little yeah hill on top of the hill and uh, try to see if I can get some shots off and sure enough we hit one home against that T62A and we know that he's still there or we hope so at least so we take a blind shot and it looks like we tracked him actually so now he's a sitting duck basically and we can just chew him apart you can see the reload time is just really good on this vehicle maybe I should have tried to go for a tracking shot there but then I would have risked uh, not penetrating him so I rather went for the side shot just so we could, uh, um, got a, uh, a juicy shot into the side of that T-34 he got completely obliterated by our vehicles I've scored 3 to 2 now that our team is capping. So I decide not that much going on here. I don't want to waste my time. And because we're kind of advancing, I decide to go along and uh, drive up to this uh, this hill up here. And you can also see the great speed of the Leopard 1, how quickly we can traverse this, uh, this terrain here. And even going uphill, he's not very, the tank's not very slow really. So, <clears throat> here's a uh, tracked Jagdpanzer E100, a very dangerous enemy. Unfortunately, we only hit the up as angled upper glaciers and bounce. Can we make the next shot count? blind but hopefully it hit looked like it hit score shifted back into the enemy's favorites three to four now and there's a canavan now he's a easy target for us so he put a good meaty shot into his lower glaciers and now a conqueror spot on our right flank so we're going to start focusing him you can see the excellent accuracy of this gun now you will notice uh, that I am above 50 meters away from these bushes just in front of me so they do not become uh, transparent so that I am still camouflaged even when I fire my gun and thus I don't get spotted and finally we managed to penetrate the Yakpanzi 100 he's on very low health now can we finish him off? nah we can't too well angled but uh, the our Jagdpanzer 100 actually gets him, so fair enough. And to make up for not getting the Jagdpanzer, we actually finish off the T71. Now, what I do here is actually not very good because I can see that this Jagd Tiger is aiming at me, and I do not retreat. So I take a shot, and uh, yeah, that wasn't really very well played for me. But we get a shot into him, and he's taken out quite easily, swinging the score back to seven to eight, and everything can still happen. Can we hit the Carnarvon again? Ah, we bounce. I probably should have aimed that one properly. And now an IS-3 appears as well. Ah, we don't bounce this time. We finish him off. Only the IS-3 left. And, ah, God, I, <laughs> I should really start going to sniper mode here. I was a bit lazy there, actually. So, we pan for two. And, uh... Unfortunately, he's killed before we can get our shot in. And we're trapped with a T-57 Heavy. I decide to repair my tracks because I don't want to be sitting there with a T-57 unloading his entire clip into me. Probably wouldn't have survived that. With my 1,000 hit points, three shots from a T-57 Heavy do 1,200 damage on average, so I had to repair. And, oh yeah, there's a T-32, and we got him by surprise. So, go for the rear shot. So, now he draws attention away from the 50B, who comes from above and finishes him off. Oh, okay, there's an FV. It's a tricky shot, but, oh my god, we make it count. Wow, that just shows you how good this gun actually is. Okay, that was quite a bit of RNG there, but... I mean, this gun is seriously good. Bounce off a T-57 heavy. Yeah, that was kind of a, a risky shot, I guess. 
haven't really got very much to shoot out right now, but IS-7 is only exposing his turret. Oh, that was a bad shot. So, uh, I decided to relocate. I'm thinking right now that if I can get to the railway tracks, um, then the enemies in the capture point will be kind of trapped between me on the one side and my allies on that hill up there on my right side, on the other hand, and uh, then we'll be able to take them apart. At least that's my plan. However, both of them are in cover. They're putting quite a lot of pressure on the cap, but unfortunately, our Yak Panzer 100 gets a juicy shot into the enemy IS-7. And now I'm thinking about flanking around. The only reason why I'm not flanking around the flanking maneuver would be really effective now. The reason why I can't do that though is because the FE-215B183 is not spotted yet. And he might be waiting on the other side of the railway dam, just waiting for me to pop my head around the corner and then just, you know, he just has to kind of, you know, sneeze on me basically and I'll be dead with that 183mm gun. So I have to be very careful here, play it very safe. No point in me dying. I can't see him yet, so maybe he's just concealed really well by those bushes. But, I mean, you know, I also want to have my slice of a pie, you know, I, uh, I want to get some more kills here. And the AMX-50B and the E-75 are advancing quite aggressively into the capture zone now, interrupting the IS-7's cap. <coughs> and maybe I can finish him off now, but I can't quite get my rectal on him. Oh, come on. And, uh... The MX-50B takes a shot, but he takes out the IS-7 quite confidently. So now it's only the FV left, so now I just think, you know, screw it. Uh, but then, nah, nah, it's it's very risky. It's kind of risky. He, I really don't want to die in the last few minutes of this game. But I finally, you know, grab some courage and decide to go for it. And, oh, sure enough, there he is. Oh, my God. But he's facing the wrong way, but he's turning around, he's turning around. Oh no, come on, come on, come on. Uh oh. Okay, okay, okay. Almost reloaded, almost reloaded, and yes. And, you know, many tanks in the game wouldn't have been able to finish off that FV-215B in this kind of situation because they just wouldn't have had the accuracy to come down from that railway dam and straight away put a accurate clutch shot into the lower glaciers of that FE and that's just where the Leopard 1 shines is these kind of situations where accuracy and aim time really count and that was one of them and it allowed me to finish the game for our team so I hope this could uh, could showcase the Leopard 1 for you however I've still got two other games for you uh, not less exciting than this one and yeah let's hop right in. and yeah let's jump right in so our second game is on Westfield and I have gone over to the eastern part of the map to try and get some shots off at the enemies uh, who are located in the in the town and basically that part of the centre of the map over there. So I get a nice shot into the KV-4 and he's taken out by our Centurion 1. So I decide that I do not have much, much chance uh, doing anything against that E-100 so I'll just progress up to this uh, bridge here and try to um, get some shots at enemies located down here in the valley. And sure enough there's an AMX 3090 ahead and a nice snapshot allows us to secure the first kill of the game. And yes, double kill, we get the SU-14-2. So next there's a Waffentrager spotted on the other side of the valley and our allies are spotting him, so we can stay here in concealment and hopefully take him out. I um, I was quite lucky that I went in. I actually uh, juked a bit with my hands to the left. So I was quite lucky that that one still hit. Now, I could, of course, proceed into the valley now, but I decide to stay up here because suddenly uh, enemy T-30 pops up. And... Uh, there again, that showcases the amazing accuracy of being able to pull off that shot, looping it over that little ridge line there, or uh, undulation, and making it hit the top of the T-30's turret. 
He's taking up with the AMX 5120, and now I decide to first of all ignore that T54 that's been spotted down there, and drive onto the bridge to have a better, uh, yeah, better angle to fire at it. And sure enough, we hit his engine deck, and finish him off, securing our third kill. And the targets just keep pop popping up as fast as we can shoot them down. M103, unluckily that bounces, not quite sure why actually that one should have gone through. It was the side of the turret. Maybe we just hit it where it curves round to the rear, I'm not sure. Second shot goes a bit low, doesn't hit. Come on. What? I seriously, come on, please. Just want to penetrate you, hit you. And uh, finally, finally, we get a shot into the T M103. WZ132 is playing quite riskily there, but we support him. And our allies are capping. We've almost won this. This M103 should actually be focusing on the. Uh, and we torch him and win the game. So, uh,. Yeah, that was a, a very short round, but uh, I hope it showcased again the sniping potential and support potential of the Leopard 1. We weren't spotted that entire game and dealt massive amounts of damage, keeping that gun firing all the time, and that's basically what you want to be doing of a Leopard 1. So, you might be asking yourself, well, it's all good if you can sit in a bush all game and snipe, but you know what happens if you have to you know, become active, if you have to go forwards and actually you know carry the game from the front line well i've got the next game lined up for you guys and hopefully it will showcase that scenario as well so i'll see you in a second so for our final round of the day we've spawned on el haluf and i'm heading out to uh, this part of the map here from where i hope to get some good snipes off uh onto the enemy ridge line enemies camping up there uh enemy rule 251 is spotted or RU251 curate light tank we get a shot into him and now there's an enemy WZ and we also hit him dealing 407 damage which is quite a nice roll and we haven't been spotted yet I wanted to take a blind shot there but just when I want to pull the trigger the RU pops up again I decide to go for him because he's the, the safer shot, basically. And I penetrate, lowing for, uh, rolling for, <laughs> I was lowing too, it was quite quite a low roll. Uh, and uh, he's taken out by the T57 Heavy, a bit of a waste of a T57 Heavy round there for those 27 HP or so. But, you know, he's out of the game, so worth. Kind of stuck for something to shoot here. So I'm hoping that those light tanks up in front will detect something. Alternatively, I'm locating over here now to see if when the enemies push here that I can get some shots into them. I'm just going to speed up the replay a bit because nothing happens right now. But this is just what I'm saying. For the first part of the game, you have to be stationary. You have to chill back and just wait and try to save your health. Don't lose any health. Uh, you know, stay uh, and uh, get those sniping shots in, and you know, especially stay uh, stay unspotted. That's very important. And then, you know, once the games you know developed a bit further, and you know, the enemy lines open up a bit, there are less tanks left. Then you can go around and clean up. So now there's an enemy T57 heavy there, and our first shot misses him or ricochets. I'm not quite sure, but the second shot hits home, and uh, he's taken up by our RT. We bounce off IS-8 and now there's a T-49 trying to make a run for it. Unfortunately, he's taken out before we can finish him off. And those enemy, uh, allied heavies there are in quite a tough situation right now. Hopefully I can help them out. I put a shot onto the driving T-62A and hopefully we'll be able to finish him off before he flees. Yes. Okay, that's our first kill. The score's 83, so actually we're winning this quite... Uh, heavily, our allies are pushing around in the west, and 
uh, now I decide it's time for me to uh, catch up to the front, otherwise there won't be anything for me left for me to shoot at. So this is the kind of, uh, maybe I even stayed a bit too long back there, but you have to, you have to kind of find the right moment where you can switch from passive play to aggressive play. It's very similar to, uh, to playing the French light tanks or the back shot or tanks like that. You always have to be thinking, uh, should I be playing passive right now or is it already the right time to play aggressive? And um, this is what I'm talking about when I say flanking round. We get a great shot into the rear turret of uh, IS-8. And can we get a second one? Yes! Okay, so now it's uh, basically just picking apart the enemies that are left over. Get a shot into the rear of the turret of the E-75. Now he's become aware to our location. But this is really good because we're engaging the enemies from three angles here and they do not know where to turn their guns. So there's always somebody on our team who can get a, you know, some free damage into them. Now we'll see if 75 is interested in me but he turns his turret round and I get another shot into the side of his turret. The WZ takes him out now there's only an E100 or a mouse actually and the E57 left from the enemy team. I decide that this E57 will probably be taken out before I can finish him off. So I go for the mouse with my next shot. Unfortunately, I bounce from the rear lower glaciers. However, that could happen. And yes, I managed to take up the E50, uh, E75 after all. So uh, my lucky day there. And the weapon trigger takes out the mouse. So quite a quick game there. And I think it really showed that it's not only possible to snipe with a leopard, but you can also, in the right situation, be aggressive and carry the game in the front line. So uh, is the Leopard you know, worth recommending and have we got some final advice? Well it is definitely one of the most difficult to play tier 10 tanks in the game or actually just tanks in the game in general because the combination of high speed and having hardly any armor makes it important for you to think about every move. If you are too aggressive you'll get punished really hard for it. The Leopard one is very unforgiving of mistakes and it will take a lot of practice to get used to it. And if you play the Leopard one you really can't afford to just go into a battle and think oh, I'm just gonna you know uh, get some kills and have fun. You have to you have to actually plan your every move and really think about your actions thoroughly before you do them. Otherwise you'll run into big trouble. That being said, in my opinion, the Leopard 1, if played correctly, is probably one of the most fun tanks in the game. Probably at tier 10, the only tank that I'd enjoy more is maybe the Batshat 25T, or, I mean, I'm not sure, I really like all of the tier 10 tanks, but the Leopard 1 has definitely got to be one of my favourite. The gun is so good, the maneuverability, I just really like the package, but I kind of made the mistake of rushing to get the Leopard 1 as my second tier 10 and at the time I got it and I mean heck even now I probably do not yet have the practice or the skill to play this tank to its full potential and probably I would if you're a new player I mean even say if you've got 10,000 games or so maybe you should first of all get some other tier 10 mediums and practice with them and then later upgrade to the Leopard 1. The Leopard 1 is a great tank for very experienced players, I feel. Probably if you kind of like the Leopard 1 playstyle, but do not feel quite confident enough about your skill level, maybe the AMX 30B would be a better choice because its armor is protection is slightly better and that's why it kind of it feels very similar to playing the Leopard 1, but it's more forgiving in a way. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this review, it was really long, I kind of tried to make up for not uploading a video for a long time. I hope you enjoyed and learned something and maybe some of you guys are going to check out the Leopard 1. For me it's definitely a very fun tank and thanks for watching me play it, I hope I see you in my next video and bye bye.